Yes, Shalom Rastafari. I caught this interesting um, um, page right here. Let's just bring it forward. We're going to call this uh, Rastafari allegory, even though it's going to be based on this in principle, and then we're going to um, vet it, right? Find the truth for ourselves based on the revelation of Rastafari, the revelation of the Imperial Majesty. So this is from chapter chapter um, 17, or XVII, and the allegory of holy warfare. And so we found that Revelation 2-7, um, I think it's .org if I'm correct. It might be .com. But if you go Revelation 2, the, the cipher, the number 2, in other words, uh, 7, or 7s, it should come up, all right? Might make up, put a link for it in, in the description. Now, What's very interesting about um, this right here is what's happening in this present time, and this is going into the Shabbat Eve, right? The Shabbat Eve, so Shabbat Shalom, Senbet Salam, and this is actually the Eid of March, in a sense. So this will be what they call the Eids of March, going back to the whole uh, Julius Caesar, right? And the whole Caesar, part of the Babylonian um, Petros Romanus matrix, right? So it's all kind of connected, but how is it connected? So we have a lot of information out there, but we need to know the truth for ourselves. That means we need to vet the information and see what sort of an intel, right? Whether it's uh, historical data or information or if it is prophetic data and in what way it's actionable and, and how our action should be. This is this is the teaching of His Majesty of Kedemawi Haile Selassie. The line of the tribe of Judah hath prevailed, right? In this, in this holy warfare, and we're in a time of holy warfare. But how do we rightly divide the word of truth? Now the Scripture says to study and show thyself approved to God, to Hashem, Baruchu, to Ha Elohim, as a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So we're going to get into this allegory, this Rastafari revelation of the allegory of holy warfare and pronounce what the scripture has already pronounced. It is written, the lion of the tribe of Judah hath prevailed. That's the good news. Now, how do we proceed? How do we walk? How do we go through this valley of the shadow of death? How do we prevail? How do we overcome? Right? And we overcome in the way, the truth, and the life of the black Christ, of the black Moshiach, of Yeshua, Adoni I, Yeshua I, HaMoshiach, Yesus Christos, Getachin. And through the testimony, right, the teaching of His Majesty, the commandment of God, and the testimony of Jesus Christ, right? Now, um, and getting into this, some might say, oh, this is just a liberation theology. This is the revelation of his imperial majesty. You see, the, 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 the theology, liberation theology that's out there, basically, that does not involve um, Ethiopia, right, that does not involve our divine heritage, is at, at least, right, counterfeited, Right, because it is disorientated, it's not looking to the east. Right, in other words, it's not looking. It has ignored the prophecy concerning the King of Kings. It it does not recognize who is the true Black Messiah, whom the Antichrist of the world, right, have risen up, right, in their unholy warfare to to to, to war against the Lamb. The war against the Lamb, the warfare. Now, this is the Ides of March. Just, I just noticed that, you know, but some might not understand what that means, but um, I would just say study, you know, study, look it up for yourself. Here, let's get into this allegory of holy warfare. Now, the, 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 the late um, Michael Murphy, right, a, a righteous Gentile, in other words, or... or a, a European Jew, Christian, Messianic Jew wrote this particular page here. Now, there's, there's some Rasta half-steppers and Nibiru nut jobs out there. You understand? They will point you to everything other than Ethiopia. 
they'll point you every, to everything other than the teaching of his majesty, right, and try to confound, you know, the, the clear testimony, the gospel of his majesty with a lot of their, um, with a lot of their speculation. We're not dealing with speculation. We're dealing with revelation, all right? So this chapter right here may be used as a defense in a court of law, in any court of law, mm-hmm, when we recognize that we are not under the law, but we are in-laws of the King of Kings and his Christ. This is our divine heritage. So this chapter, right, and this reasoning, when properly overstood, right, may be used as a defense, right, in a court of law. It delineates precepts, and I, I find precepts and statutes from the sacred texts, from the Torah, from the Orit, from the Metzhav Kedus, from the Book of the Seven Seals, from the teaching of His Majesty, and it reasons from history why one must stand bold, right? Stand bold in their refusal to serve in Babylon's armed forces or really the armed forces of any nation at this present prophetic time. Right? It rehearses Jah's instructions to Moses, the instructions of Yahweh to Moses, to Musa in Exodus chapter 19 and 20. And it reminds I and I, remember the Shabbat to keep it holy, it reminds I and I that when Musa, when Moses, when he descended with the Torah, with the Orit at Exodus 32 and 15, that the that the the tables, what's known as the tables of the law, were written on both sides. So let's bring this let's bring this forward. That what's known as the the um, Torah, right, or the tables, right, right, was written on both sides. This is very interesting. It was written on the front, and it was written on the back. And this is when Moses descended. Now, what does that mean? Now, this connects with the two truths, right? There's the two truths teaching. And uh, Brother Gerald Macy in, in, in Book of the Beginning, in his, in his voluminous works, he went through painstaking details to, to explain many um, suppressed aspects, right? Many, 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 many facts, right, concerning... The, the role of Africa in Africa, Ethiopia, black people, right? And he was basically rebuking his own white folks, right, for their hypocrisy and their insanity of not seeing the half of the story in his time. So he touches on the two truths, or what ones might call ma'at. Mm -hmm. Now the scriptures clearly states to us that Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and he was mighty in word and deed. All right? And we know that his imperial majesty says, for my part, I glory in the Bible. So this is how you'll know some of these roster half-steppers, too, because this is the time, this particular Torah portion, is it, is it Hekal? It, it's speaking of uh, the of Vayachel, Vayachel, is and he assembled, right? This is the 22nd weekly Torah portion of Parsha in our Judeo Christian cycle of Orit Minbab or Torah readings, and it's the 10th in this book of Exodus, right? And it constitutes Exodus chapter 35, verse 1 to Exodus chapter 38, verse 20. And we as black Jews or Ethiopian Hebrews elect Ras Tefari. In the diaspora, the diaspora, we read it in the 22nd Shabbat or Sabbath after the Simchat Torah, and it's generally in March. And in and, and this uh, 2013, this Jubilee year, for we as the black diaspora, it is March 15th, 2013. All right? Now, there's an additional footnote, right? Um, they say in... Because of, because of our heavenly calendar, right, the lunisolar Hebrew calendar, right, that means the Hebrew Ethiopian or Ethiopic calendar, not the Gregorian calendar, but the Julian calendar, right, combined with the, with the Hebraic calendar, it contains up to 55 weeks 
the exact number varying between 50 in common years and 54, 55 in leap years. In leap years, which are 2011, 2014, 2016, and 2019, Parasha Vayichel is uh, read uh, separately, right? Or Vay, uh, uh, Vayik, uh, Yikahel, Vayikahel. I just had to read the, the Hebrew right there. Vay, Vayikahel or Vayikahel, Vayikahel, Vayikahel. Or they might say Vayikahel or Vayikahel, Vayikahel. Right, Vaikel, uh, according to the Ashkenazi pronunciation. But being that as it may, Parsha, this Parsha is read separately. But in common years, such as 2012, 2013, 2015, 2017, 2018, this portion is combined with the next um, portion, um, Pekude, to achieve the number of weekly readings needed. So these two are actually combined. So we're we're basically dunning the book of the book of uh, Exodus in this cycle of Torah readings. And now pekude um, means the amount the amounts of. So we have gathering and amounts, and there's there's a lot of significant detail to this right here. But what we need to understand in this present time is that we're not coming out of ancient Egypt, but we're coming out of the north country as Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23. This is why the, pes, the, the, the Pesach or the Fasica, the Fasica um, preparation for this year is so very and vitally important. I think we have maybe a, a, a week or so, uh, Subai, at least a week before, and maybe, maybe a couple of days. So these are actually combined themes right here. But let's go to the prophetic of where we're at, who we are. Remember, Israel, right? I and I ain't ancient Israel as a template, as the mythological template for I and I present Israel, that when they came out, they came out armed. Mm -hmm. So that no one makes a mistake about it. We're speaking of first spiritually armed. Because if you have physical arms and you're not spiritually armed, you're, you're not able to stand bold, right? So folks might have, we're not dismissing having physical arms or your second um, amendment rights. We're not dismissing that. You understand? And even His Majesty, our Father, teaches us that we as Ethiopians were only able to maintain, right, maintain um, our independence, our covenant, the holy covenant, by way of our faith, faith first and foremost, by way of our faith and force of arms. So you have to know I and I's story. And this also connects with uh, what's known as Selassie's War, right? Remember Selassie's War. So when Israel comes out of this spiritual Egypt, we come out spiritually armed, Right? Physically armed as necessary, but first and foremost spiritually armed. And this keeping of of Yah's way is what arms us, right? Because he gives the authorization in and through his only begotten son, in and through Yeshua HaMushi, and this is the the teaching of his Imperial Majesty. If a guy or a gal tries to belittle the true divinity of Christ, they're belittling your identification, your overcoming, your blessing, and basically what our Father, what Abba Kedus, 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 what His Imperial Majesty has taught us. So, so who should you follow, right? Who should you, who's witness, right? Who has believed his testimony? Who has my men, his report, and I and I report? So here in Jeremiah 23, verse 8, it says, Verse 7 and 8, it says, Therefore, behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that they shall no more say during that Seder and that Pesach, that Fasica time, that Jah lived, the Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. So it's not out of a physical land of Egypt. America is not Egypt. It is spiritual Egypt. Verse 8, but Yahai, Jah lived, which brought up and which led the seed, the race. This is why the point of race is so much front and center all over the place, because they want to confuse you. They want to disorientate you. The seed, he led the seed of the house of Israel 
out of the north country and from all countries whither I had driven them. He says, whither he had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. Repatriation is a must. In Jah, I and I trust. Stay tuned for the next part.